Hello, everyone, and welcome to this conversation presented by White House Custom Color. Are you trying to mute me? No, it's just <laughs> real loud. And I, can't I sold Amazon, but it was $25. <laughs> listening to listen, not listening to respond. Yes. Oh, thank you for that. Okay, John Hartman, you are, in my mind, the, the light painting master, right? There's, there's a few people in, 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 in the industry as a whole that do this, but I feel like in our portion of the industry, when it comes to light painting, it's your name at the top of that list. So with, with that, what I would like you to do is tell me a little bit about yourself first, who you are, where you're located and a little bit about your history and then we'll, let's dive in. Okay. Thanks, Jed. I'm, um, I've been around the industry for a long time and after about 40 years of being in business, I kind of stumbled into this thing called light painting and it sort of created a whole new genre of product line for my studio, but it's also created more fun than I can ever imagine photographically. And so I worked really hard to try to provide, a mix of products for various clientele and found that it can be not only fun to do, but it's also highly profitable. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, I've done things such as um, uh, mostly, I have to say most of them have been uh, boy toys, men's yeah. things Vehicles. that they have, their cars, motorcycles, cars. airplanes, right, antique airplane. guitars, you know, <laughs> uh, but I've also done a lot of commercial work and that commercial mm -hmm. work has actually brought in more income than the, um, than the, than the, the individual paying jobs where I'm doing, you know, light paintings for companies and institutions. And when that happens, it opens up all kinds of possibilities because nobody else can do it. And is most of that exterior, like architectural stuff, or are you doing interior stuff as well? Yeah, both interior and exterior. Um, last year I was hired by a company that makes manufacturers log homes. And, uh, I spent, I don't know, I probably had 10 or 15 sessions with them doing mm. all kinds of different projects outside and as well as in time. And these places are beautiful and beautiful uh, interiors and exteriors. So it was kind of fun to do. And the CEO just hung around with me the whole time and, you know, kind of directed the views and angles they wanted because they were oh, nice. specifically for websites. So it was really sure. quite easy to do. And, um, you know, I didn't start any kind of project until we had the position okayed and, you know, we waited for the right light and he was willing to do that with me. So it's nice because when you are doing this, you can kind of call the shots, you know, say, listen, in order for this to work, we have to have the light at certain spots. We're going to have to do this. Um, you know, look at my son, the sun compass, uh, on my phone and it says it's about mm -hmm. five thirty. we should be able to do this. And mm -hmm. so, you know, the people really sign on to that and it makes it a lot more fun when you do it that way. Now we, it's, this is, a, it, there's quite a process involved in light painting. It's, it's, it's not easy. Maybe to you, it is simple, you know, and maybe to others, it, it is simple after you learn some bits and pieces. Um, but there's a lot to it. We're going to try to condense it today. Is that right? And you're going to kind of go through a process. Um, is that, is that what, is that what I'm about to see? Yeah, I think there's, there's three setups. Number one, is that you've got to know what you want in advance. And that's a little bit more difficult for, especially people who have come from the digital only age who really didn't have to set up a photograph. They can just take it, look on the back of the camera. If it wasn't right, they could change it again. But because you're making, you know, anywhere from a dozen to several hundred photographs, mm -hmm. you have to get the set first. That's the number one project. And yeah. if you're doing that on your own, you just, you know, use your own eye. If you're working with a client, then you have to get their, uh, their two sets as well. Sure. The second part of it is the lighting part of it. And the lighting part of it requires a number of different lights. Um, I can provide a, a, a link to you if you'd like to my, um, to my oh, tool no. set so you can see the, all the different lights and so forth that I use, depending on the size of the, of the subject. And that's a whole separate thing. But um, uh, once you have the images, then you have to go back and process them and then put them together into a single image. And that's, I thought we'd do today. Um, people okay. ask me all the time, how long does this take? And, <laughs> yeah. you know, the first one takes, you know, four days and then it gets better, but I've got it down now <laughs> where realistically for just about any project to do, I can take about an hour and a half to do the photography and about an hour and a half to do the processing. 
And uh, what I've done today is I've put together uh, a project I've recently done called all the images I don't need and want. So it make, it'll go a little bit faster on the video, but you'll be able to see um, be, through the automation process, how quickly it is to actually mm. put one of these things together. Using uh, like presets and actions that you have. That you've well, developed? yes, I've, well, I've created an, a, a series of action or an action set that we use. Um, my light painting students get this uh, action set when they come mm -hmm. in because it wouldn't make sense to anybody who didn't have the instruction because they're, uh, they, uh, right. they're specified, specified to a certain task right. and you have to know what that task is. But, mm -hmm. um, but I, over the years in doing workshops, live workshops, I've had lots and lots of input from people who know a lot more about Photoshop than I have. So I've been able oh, to sure. refine this thing to a, a really, uh, really, um, just a real pinpoint um, accuracy so we can get things done very, very quickly with minimal hassles. Photoshop awesome. is not, you know, the, the light painting is not intuitive. It's not something you look at and you go, oh, I could make that. You know, I could point to a photograph and say, there's a hundred photographs here, show me where they are, you know, and nobody would be able to do that. Where right. you can look, look, look at a portrait and see, you know, and there's an out of focus background. We say, oh, F28, you know, and yeah. there's a yes. catch light in the eyes. You know, they use a little flash or fill light. Mm -hmm. So, but you don't do that with this. So, you know, you, there's a, there's that three part knowing what you want to do first, knowing the lighting part of it and then doing the editing part of it. I'm ready. Let's jump in. Okay. Um, my screen right now has the, uh, all the photographs that I processed and will be using today. Um, basically, in Photoshop, though, you have to start off with a, if I get here, a quick, there we go, uh, with what's called a base image. And I just make a photograph. Um, you can't go ahead and light paint all of these cornfields in the back trees and stuff, and, but I still want them to show up. So, um, so what I'm using is I'm, use, I'm taking an image and underexposing it just a little bit. And at some point during the process, toward the very end, I'll come back and, and be able to mm. brush in some of this just a little bit. It doesn't matter that the vehicle itself is dark. In fact, I'm not going to brush anything in there about that at all. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is to, one of the actions that we use is, is just to basically it's, it creates a... Uh, um, and here we go. It doesn't work at all. That's what it does. Here we go. <laughs> nice to work with a professional, huh? Let's see. <laughs> Here we go. Let's undo it. There we go. Okay, I just had one little um, button that wasn't fixed. Basically, it's creating a it, it's creating a mask over it and filling it with black. We don't need to see it right now. I can turn that mask on and off like this just by clicking on the, the reveal mm -hmm. button. But I don't need anything right for it right now. So what I'm going to do is I go back to uh, to my very first image here and open that up in Photoshop. Using the uh, lasso tool, I'm gonna just draw over a bit of it. You can stack these, but eventually the file gets so big, you won't be able to handle it. So if you just take a little bit at a time, and I've got an action here that basically copies this file, closes the window, uh, pastes it in place on my base layer, and then oh. uh, changes it to blending mode lighten, so I can go back in and with my brush tool, just brush Do these in. have to be in tabs? To what have to be in tabs? I mean, do the images have to be set up in tabs in Photoshop or when it closes that no, file, it, closes it automatically it. goes to the other file, right. the base it layer underneath? Because there's only one layer in, inside of it. And right. do you tend to, tend to brush back at a fairly low rate here, a high 100% opacity, but a low flow. And if I get this big enough here, I can, I can go back pretty quickly. So that's mm -hmm. basically the first image right there. And then just going back to the second one, and open that up and then I have this on top so I can go back and just sort of take this. So you're, you're knowing which, which piece you're going to focus on each time. Well, and yeah, that's what I, you're I, lassoing. Try, yeah, you, because if you, if you try to put the whole file and you certainly can put the whole file and just copy and paste it in, but it, the files it gets really, really big when you do that. And eventually right. it, your computer barks. So, right, right, so this right. is just a much, much easier and much more efficient way of doing it. Um, this is the front of the, vehicle here. Yeah. I'm just going to go out like that. A little bit of the darkened area there. And uh, sometimes you brush it all in. Sometimes you brush in part of it in. You know, if it's too bright, like I think it's a little bit bright down here in front. So I'm going to go back and change it by hitting the X key 
and move right. my flow way down low like this and then just sort right. of darken that just a tiny bit. Oh, so I love it. It's so bright. Boy, the actions are a, a must with this, I feel. Like. Yeah, I mean, you can't do it otherwise. Oh, you could, but it, just, it would just take Taste way too forever. long. Yeah. yeah. So this next one here is the side. Um, we can go in like this. I'm not a big fan of this line right here, but I'll show you how we can take that out a little bit later. We'll brush this in like that. I'm trying to, oops, it's only 1%. So Are you not a big fan that. of that line because it's not congruent with the body style? Well, the curve just, of the... first of all, I have two of them there right now. See that right here? Two of them. Yeah. So I can go back yep. with, my, with my brush tool, and if I hit the X key to switch it back to black, Yep. And just a fairly high flow, I can just take that out of there and just use the first one and it'll darken the whole thing I just see. a little bit. I see. If I decide I want to do that. I'm not going to do that right now, but that's, that's okay. what you can do. Go back here like this. And now this is the side and the back end. So we'll open that up and bring this in. Now, I'm not going to brush the shiny part of the thing here at all. I'm just going to brush the back end and the... And the um, yeah, you can be boards. very selective with what you decide to reveal. Exactly, right. And you don't normally reveal a whole lot. You want to make sure that you have uh, just what you, in, in order to see, if you just click this mask on and off by clicking the, yeah, uh, the, the, the mask, you can see what's there, yep. what's not there. So I'm going to try to try to get a little bit more of this going on um, about here. Oops, that's a little bit much. We'll turn that flow back down here again. And let's see, right about there, a little bit on the tires. Really, that's all I want right there. And well, and this may, this may be obvious to some people, but a, a key piece of this is that your camera cannot move as you're getting these shots. Right. The, the, if the camera moves, you start over again. There's no way you can <laughs> right. fix it. It's right. just, it's not possible to fix it. Um, right. Don't you even just try. Have to go back. Yeah, you just have to go back and, and try it again. And that's okay. Uh, you only have to do it once or twice before you realize right. that. One of the things that right. I do at right. night is if you want, you can go and um, go to Lowe's or a hardware store and get a little LED light, little one that would go on your keychain. And if you hang that from the bottom of your tripod, it creates a nice soft glow underneath your camera, shows where all your tripod legs are. Right. And so that's, that's a, a great way idea. of not having a, somebody, that was not my idea. Somebody brought that up to me in a workshop, but it's kind of nice idea. to be able to have that. Yeah. Um, here's the front tire. Mm -hmm. So we open that up and there's just a little bit of that I want to do right in here like this. And so you can just see, how it just gets a That's little just bit so cool. in there like that. You could not light this any other way. There's no possible way you could ever make this happen with a single, you know, like a soft box or something like that. Um, it just allows you so much more now you can, if you click that on and off, you can see what you're getting. I'm getting yep. a little bit more on the running board here, a little bit more on the tire. You don't have to do much. And this is one more on the back tire here. Um, if you light it from different angles, then sometimes you get a, just a different uh, series of reflections. I'll turn that on and off again. You see, it's just a little bit there. But I'm just going to take a little bit like that. Okay. Is the and devil now, in the details, John? I mean, is it is that what it, this is all about in some ways? Like just the little pieces here and the little pieces there rather than, you know, I something think it more is. broad? Yeah, yeah, I think it is. Like here, there's the front seat, okay, yep. in the dashboard. Okay, yep. how are you going to light that with a softbox? You can't. You got to get in there <laughs> with your hand underneath there. And my hand was, I was actually lighting this with my hand that's showing, but because my hand was moving, you don't see it in the photograph. Right. So then we'll go back here. This is now the interior. I did several interior shots. And uh, sometimes I put the light on the, on the seat and just point it up like I did here, just to give us a little bit. You can see the A pillars and B pillars inside. Here's another one, just one more, just to kind of add a little bit more to this. I'm not gonna, this bright part here, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna brush that in. So I'm just gonna come up to that. Oh, see, yeah, just, just that little thing, kind of, just yeah. that little piece. Yeah. I'm not going to get any other way. And this one, I'm not sure. Oh, yeah, this is the uh, the back of the Ooh, seat yeah. color here for the truck. So we'll put that in right there. Just that little bit. That's such a great example. Just that part right there. Tiny amount. Yep. And yeah, this last yeah. one, all these interior shots, each one, you, each time you do it, watch, I'll turn it on and off. You can see just that little bit. Just add that just in makes there. That's a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. And then um, this is the actual light that the 
from the dome light from the vehicle. So I put that on so it makes it look like there's a reason for those lights to be on there. Oh, nice. And, and there. That's even, that's so and then these are the lights of the car itself. And there's all kinds of running lights. Sometimes I'll just point a flashlight right into the, if it's just a solid, you know, a normal headlight. But these had all kinds of crazy LEDs and stuff. So yeah. We're um, getting I took the whole thing. Yep. Yeah. This is a, this is actually a high school senior's truck. Must oh. be nice. I didn't have, I had my 63 Rambler when I was in high school, but. Yeah, I had an 82 go. conversion van. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah. The parents are smart giving you those cars. You know, they didn't, they didn't well, I, even, I, I had to buy my cars too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So there we go. So that's the lights on. There's the lights off. Oh, gosh. Pretty cool. Isn't that neat? Okay. And then, um, then we're going to a little bit on the, if you don't do this, you're going to be in real trouble. It's really right. important to make sure that you get the tread mm. inside tread of the vehicle, because mm. what ends up happening is it looks like a flat tire and there's nothing there. Mm. So just that tiny little bit there is all it takes. And then we have to do the same thing on the other side. And we'll do that over here. Like That's that. a pro tip right there. Yeah. Cause you're, you just miss out totally if, if, you know, without that tread there. And then the next one is the back tire here. That's pretty much lit, I think, already. But we'll give it a shot and see what happens. There's some little bit on the bottom here that needs to go. Yep, just that tiny amount right a there. A little bit, yeah. So here's the difference. See that? Just mm -hmm. that little bit. All the difference in the world. Now we got the front end. Yeah, and, you uh, have that grill and the logo. Yeah, and you spent money, extra money on that. So we'll put that in there. Sure. And then, again, when you fill it in, I'll bring my brush a little bit larger. You can just see how nice that looks. I just fill that in without between that and this. See the difference? Yep. yep. It's huge. Okay. Oops. And, and, and what's really interesting is that that's a really big difference to the client. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. They, I mean, they're, they're totally they, – the, the interesting thing about this, and I always have a client come with me. They don't, they don't just – say here's the car you can deal with it right. later i'll come back i always have them there because i want them to know exactly how much energy and effort goes into this That's and interesting. um they also get to help me out you know sometimes i'll mm -hmm. put them to work and they they'll click the button for me um everything mm -hmm. has to be done remotely you can't touch the camera so um it, the camera is triggered through a uh, a wireless trigger and that yep. is sent to the, to the uh, camera and then i also have a wireless view system so the camera then shoots the file over to my iPad so the client yep. can see it. I can see it, make sure that my exposures are correct and so forth. Perfect. This one is the, uh, this is just the rear view mirror, just a little, a couple more details on that. So yeah, we'll bring that in here mirror. about right there like that. And just a tiny amount there. And then this is the other mirror. And of course, if you look closely, you'll see the light there. We don't want the light in the picture, so I'm going to go just – and that little blob right there is my hand. So my hand is moving. I don't necessarily want this bright spot here, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right around here mm -hmm. like this. And, yep. and we'll bring that in just like that. It's pretty cool. That's and great. then now this is the uh, inside of the tire, and I lit the whole thing, but I'm only going to do the inside – of the uh, of the wheel, just to show the oh. tire part. Not even the uh, not even the, the the rubber itself. Just the just the inside part. Let me make my brush a little bit smaller. Oh, the there rim. Yeah, oh, see that's the rim there. Just beautiful. A little bit. If you do too much of it, see it to get that shiny stuff there. Yeah, I'm not a big that. fan of that at all. So this right. is about it right there. And then this is the front end of the vehicle, underneath the grills. So I want to make sure that there's a little bit of something going on there. Actually, what I'm going to sure. do is bring this over like this yeah to get all that. the way over yeah, 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 yeah. I, I did the, the whole thing here to bring that in and see what happens um, and then we'll just see if i click this on and off you can see there's a lot yeah. going on there besides the grill yeah. but we're going to do the grill first yeah there's stuff down there <laughs> yeah and there's some cool lighting on the on the front of the, the grass and the foreground which, right. yeah yeah it's pretty slick Okay, and there's just that enough there, it's just so you can see that there's something else going on there, and also yeah. you can see underneath the wheel, and right. you can see the struts and so forth. So that's good. And then uh, we're getting close. This one here is what is the difference between these two? I'm not sure why I have this one. I don't think I'm going to use that one. Okay, so now if you recall, 
um, go back here. You recall I had this, uh, this base layer image and I had this sky. So what I did is I processed this file again in Lightroom, very, very dark. So the sky itself was very, oh. very dark. And that yep. created this entirely as a silhouette. And yep. then what I did is I used my, um, my, my, uh, uh, my selection tool and I right. um, selected just the sky only. Mm -hmm. And I used the mask, selected mask to brush these little areas here by the trees. Yep. And then, so basically it cut out all of the, cut out the truck, all of these trees and the grass. The only thing it saved was the, um, the, the, the sky. I did, sure. I did also use the pen tool and went a little bit around the windows back here because windows, I wanted somebody right? to come through. So I didn't want to take all the time to do that, but, but basically that's what happened. That, that, and I, when I selected that file, I saved it. So now I have that file and this is it right here. Okay. So, um, so I'm going to open that up and now I'm going to select the whole thing and I'm going to paste that in uh, as we did before. And I also have to turn all these other ones on. There we go. Okay. So I've got uh, my, this here. If I turn this off, just turn this, turn the, the, the mask all the way off. There's my sky. Okay. Yep. So it's okay like this, but I thought it would be kind of fun to do something just a little bit more dramatic. So what I did is I created a, um, a levels, I'm sorry, a hue saturation adjustment and I put a clipping mask on it right here. So the clipping mask affects only this top layer only and not all the layers layer. yep. underneath it. So then I can, what I can do then is I can change, first of all, I can change the hue. So mm -hmm. if I want to make it more of a red background, mm -hmm. maybe something like that, I can. If I want to make it a little bit more. Like and you that. can do things like these to complement the colors right. of the truck. And that's exactly what, yeah, that's what you want to try to do. And that, that that's a pretty dramatic, that's a little too much there, but I can go back and just darken it like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have, you know, I mean, that's not a totally unrealistic sky like that. So, um so you've no, got this, not. yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool. Now, we talked about this at the very beginning, how this is totally black here right now, okay? Right. So yep. I've got this base layer that has a, uh, a layer mask on it. It's a white layer mask. So if I click on that and switch my um, foreground back to black, yep. what I can do is keep the, the flow very, very low, like maybe just two, one or two percent. Really? And I can that brush low. in, okay. I can just brush in a little bit of this. Mm. It's almost too much. I'm gonna just mm -hmm. gonna take it back to just one percent and wow. just a tiny amount. So now I'm gonna get a little bit. Bring that in there just a little bit there. And is that giving you some some depth? Do you feel is that how you well, is that how it, you look at this? I don't want it to be totally. If you have it totally black, it looks the the. Uh, um, in my opinion, it sort of gives you the the feeling that there wasn't it. It, it was completely light painted, which. Um, and I would oh. go in here a little bit more tricky if I was going mean, to get closer to this if I would want to. But so you so can you can continue to brush in there, yeah. And it yeah. looks like it it really does look like you know there's there that was done outside, but there's a little bit of of light uh, in the background. Right. If you don't have that light in the background, it, this is something to play with. It's not I'm not making right. it super easy right now. And that you want to go right to the truck so you don't have any. But it's it's a little. It's a little wonky right now, but you can you can see how you could get. Um, I can just brush it back to if I want to put a little black. Well, back. this is a nuanced piece, right? right like this right. is something that you play with. There's not a formula for this, right? Right. You can't just wipe a brush across it and have it work. This is a nuanced piece of the of the yeah. whole work. So you know, we started with this, yeah, and we ended with that, and. <laughs> You know, and the other thing is people always ask, you know, well, did you Photoshop this? Well, of course we did in Photoshop, <laughs> but the only thing, the only thing that that's different about this than, in, than any other light is that it was, I used light. I still use light. There's no filters. Right. There's no, right. there's no crunching of colors or contrast or right. anything like that. You create the contrast with the light yep. and that gives you then the ability to basically shape your subject and light your subject any way you want. Of course, yeah, the, to one that thing end, it, the, the only thing that was manipulated in that way using this example in particular was the sky but otherwise that's right. everything else 
that's just straight up pieces of the truck, different ways that you lit it, mashed together. Exactly. And the one thing that has to be kind of remembered, um, and this is part of the setup process, is that the lights, if you're using more than one light, you have to make sure that you white balance the lights uh, and that those light balance, mm -hmm. then those, the white balances are applied to each yeah. image that you shoot with that particular light. Otherwise, you're going to have, because each light is going to have very yeah, wildly all kinds different, of different temperatures. Yeah. yeah. And, and, you, and you'll end up with, uh, you know, it just the results won't be good. You'll have to make a black and white picture. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's um, a good, that's a really good point. Actually. Yeah, it works out real well. So that, that, and I, um, I use, um, I use a color checker passport and create custom presets that not only white balance it, but also uh, calibrate the, the colors because LED lights don't all emit color the same. It's not mm -hmm. a linear thing. So, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you can balance your gray card and the grays will be neutral, but then your blues will still be way off or your reds will still be way off. So the color checker passport, it's an X-Rite tool you can get for, I think about $80. And it's a, it's a small little color patch thing, which we're all familiar with. You take a picture of that and you can create a, a profile specifically for that light. And then once you have that profile, you can save it as a custom setting, a yeah. preset in Lightroom or ACR yeah. Adobe Camera Raw, and then yeah. just, just click on that every time, you know, you can select all the pictures you took with X light and right. apply that. And then you select mm -hmm. the next set for Y light and, and yeah. apply the next uh, white balance for that. So it's a, it's not, um, it, it's a process. It's, as you said earlier, it's not something that you just kind of take it um, um, and, and fiddle with it because it, it, you'll be frustrated. And, right. you know, that's kind of why I started doing these workshops and, and more recently put together a, a Lightroom Classroom, which is an online video series, a tutorial series. Because Where can people go for that? Because I, I, I discovered all this, I knew about this, but I attended the workshop and it was awesome to be mm -hmm. there and do all of this hands-on. I loved it. But where can people go now to either sign up for any workshops you might be having in the future or to get access to everything online? Well, my suggestion would be to... Um, uh, to take a look, the, the light the light painting classroom is kind of a tutorial as as and you've had a chance to take a look at it. I think a little yeah. bit. It yeah. it's designed for people who have really no experience in light painting, and um, but it also is used as a as a refresher and a reference to people who have who are, have experience in it or have taken my workshop or whatever. They're using it as a kind of a uh, go back to and I forgot yep. about this sort of thing. Yep. Um, they're not identical but they're both uh, get you to where you want to go. What I'm trying, sure. to, trying to do is to, uh, to make it easier for photographers to do this because it's, it can be frustrating if you don't get what you're looking for right away. It's easy yeah. enough to put down. So yeah. um, the, 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 the classroom is uh, like, I think there's about 40 videos that really explain everything in total nuance so that you, when you're done, you can, you, you can really do this well. Um, if you decide at that point that you want to uh, the live uh, experience, the live workshop experience, 100% of the tuition for the light painting classroom will be applied toward your tuition toward nice. the uh, workshop. So, nice. it, you know, you're not, you're not, uh, you know, it's like getting it for free. So it, right. it that way, because there are some differences between the live part and the classroom part, obvious differences. You can ask questions, you can see things, you know, as they're going in real time. So- Well, and like you said, uh, there are other people, there are students that bring some of their own feedback and some of their right. own experience to those workshops. And you yourself learn different things that then you can integrate into your own workflow and All make the time. little tweaks yeah. here and there. Yeah. yeah, All of us are smarter than one of us. I like that. <laughs> but, yes. but, but it is, you know, it's been great. I've had a lot of ch a chance to meet some really, really neat people and to mm -hmm. um, get some who really, really know their stuff. And they, they've gone on to do some really great things with this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the web, the web, uh, the URL for that is just, it's John Hartman light And that's the, uh, that's just my, one for clients who want to or are interested in light painting. But yep. if you go slash classroom, that will give you the information about the light painting classroom, the, uh, the mm -hmm. video tutorials, or if you go slash workshop, you can go and get information about the workshop. Uh, there's two Perfect. of them scheduled right now for next year. One is in March and in May and one is in, uh, in late August, early September, I believe. 
Um, but uh, Both and they're in 2021, right, here. right? Yeah, they're they're yeah they're going to be held right here in town. It's really cool. Our hotel is like oh, two blocks from our studio, right. and uh, the place where we're doing the thing is another two block. Everything is two blocks away. So yep. it's kind of fun once you're here. Yeah. We just walk from place to place. There's yeah. good restaurants and stuff around around yeah. there. That's all in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. Yes, it's center of nothing, but it's actually <laughs> uh, it, it's kind of nice to be able to. Uh, I mean, it's a great little town, and I I did I, I did a lot of workshops out, and you know, I, people would sponsor me, and I go to or host me and go and go to different yeah. locations, yeah. and that was fun too. But this this gives us this opportunity gives us um, far more choices for light painting subjects if i have some person in right. another town who because is of like, your connections also right. we were able we were able to see different displays and different things that you had actually done for real clients as well oh yeah the in town, town. which yeah. i thought I mean, was really neat there, as well yeah there, there's something to, there's something that's less artificial than going to another location i don't mind right. doing it and i probably will eventually do it again but sure but i really like the i like being able to do it right here and you know you fly mm -hmm. into to central wisconsin airport they pick you up at the hotel um mm -hmm. or and drop you off and you don't need a car and it's it's actually it's really pretty nice and hopefully by uh, by spring and next summer we'll be somewhat back to normal here so we'll enjoy some of our cool yes, restaurants please. and so forth <laughs> yes please well, uh, John, I really appreciate your time. This was great. This is exactly what I was hoping and expecting. Um, I, again, I've taken the workshop, so this was a nice refresher even for myself. Um, uh, I'm excited to go out and, and do this again and, and mess around with it some more. And who knows? I, I think you're right. It's, this is one of those things that is, is super niched. It's not something that just anybody can do. And I think this is certainly worth people giving it a shot with their clients to really be able to offer something super unique. Don't you think? Well, and I, I do agree that. And you can, the thing is you already have clients. If you have portrait clients, you mm -hmm. have portrait, those clients have fancy cars and motorcycles mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. So you don't have to go digging for them. Or if you're doing corporate right. accounts, those CEOs right. have these toys or you might yeah. do somebody and then find out that they can, you can do some corporate work for them. So it, it, yep. it goes both ways. But, yep. you know, I, I, I say this and because it is also very important if this is in, if you're interested in earning um, some money with this, um, within 18 months of starting this up, uh, I was doing six figures in light painting. So it is uh, a very profitable niche That's and awesome. it's something that you can do, um, you know, sort of, you know, it's done after hours <laughs> for the most yeah. part you know you're doing them at right. night so it's not even taking right. you away from your normal you know, normal workflow if you, if you don't right. want. but and i have um white house makes all i the only kind of uh product i have for this is metal prints i don't mm -hmm. i don't offer it as a as a, a standalone any other kind of photograph so it's kind of a mm -hmm. unique a new a unique product uh just last night i gave a presentation to uh, a, a flying club and I'd, one of the fellas in the group, I had done his, light, his uh, uh, aircraft last summer. In fact, it's featured in the video series. And he had me come back and talk to his club last night. And I have three or four new customers just new from talking clients. to them. Yeah. So it's, uh, and, you know, again, those people have friends who have friends who have friends. So it's really, really, when you get into a niche like this, even though it's a niche, it's all your own. You're not going to have to worry about whether or not somebody else not is doing it. Not a lot of competition, even, right. But even if they're doing it, they're not, they don't know the same people that you do. And, and, you know, if you're farther ahead of the curve from that, and most people who do this don't really learn it well enough to do it really where they want to do it for anybody else yeah. anyway. So the determined person can do really well. I love it. I love it. Hey, brother, thank you for your time. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's always good to chat with you, Ted. Thanks very much for having me. Until next time. All right. See you then. Hey guys, thanks for watching this conversation presented by White House Custom Color on YouTube. Be sure to check out our other content and click that subscribe button right there. Right. <laughs> right there. It's there somewhere. <laughs>